Amen. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bible Believers Baptist Church of Imperial Beach. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, I want everyone to open up to 506 in their red hymnals. 506 in their red hymnals. We haven't done this one before, so give us some grace. I might butcher this like I usually do. On the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, when the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. <coughs> where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day. I am going home to stay, meet me there. Meet me there, oh meet me there. When the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on that happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Here our fondest hopes are vain, dearest links are rent in twain, but in heaven no throb of pain, meet me there. By the river sparking bright in the city of delight, where our faith is lost in sight, meet me there. Meet me there, oh meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Where the harps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king, meet me there. When in sweet communion blend heart with heart and friend and friend in a world that ne'er shall end, meet me there. Meet me there, oh meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Amen. It's not bad for our first time. Uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Father God, Lord, we thank you so much for your service today, Lord, and we uh, thank you for all the brethren that were able to make it today, and we ask that you just can give them a spiritual blessing for showing up, for deciding to come and listen to your word, Lord. Uh, and Lord, we ask that you come down and meet with us, Father, for the, when there are two or more, three or more gathered together in, their, in your name, there you are in the midst, Father. And Lord, uh, we ask that you can bless the singing, and Lord, and help us to just uh, give up a joyful noise for the Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, are you ready, brother? Oh, Tis see. so sweet. We're gonna have a, some accompaniment while we sing "Tis so sweet," and um, maybe we should have practiced this a little what bit. Was the page number again? Two five seven. Two five seven. And it goes like it goes like this: "Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, <coughs> just to take Him at His word, <coughs> just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord." You get that? So. Does that sound about right, brother? Sure. We haven't done we haven't done this together before, so hopefully it pans out. And please stand if you can. If you, if you have to sit down and play, then you can follow me and feel free to. Careful there. <laughs> You want to give it a practice run before we start? Uh, this might not be high enough. Hold on a second. Is it so sweet to trust in Jesus? Just to take it at His word. Just to rest upon His promise. Just to know the same the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Is that it? how I trust. All right, all right. Let's let's start from the top. Let's do this all together. All right. That was a practice run. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it for real now. How you doing? You ready, brother? All right. I'll start. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. 
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to love him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to love him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Last one. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to love him more. Amen. Great job. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Oh, you're welcome. That was great. Making a joyful noise. We got one more. Don't worry. Uh, well, first, next we're going to do the uh, announcements and offering. Uh, first announcements. I gave you the bulletin. Brother, you have a bulletin right there for you as well. Uh, on this, There you go. So on the bulletin, we have uh, the schedule for this week, and Sunday is today. Today, uh, we'll be having a preaching on the roles of men and women in the church. And uh, do you know your place? Do you know your place as a man of God or as a woman of God? And that'll be the question that'll be brought up today, and, and I'm hopefully the Holy Spirit's going to convict you, and you'll know the answer. Now, uh, our memory verse for today is John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the reason I brought that me uh, as a memory verse for today is our lesson, uh, as it was on Wednesday, but you guys weren't able to make it, it's going to be on the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. And there's a lot of misconception about what the, that is. Are they the same or are they different? And we're going to be answering that question. By the end of today's service, you're going to have an understanding on the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. Okay? So the next will be Wednesday service, the 29th. We'll be meeting at 4 p.m. Veterans Park. That's here under the tent. 4 p.m., not 3, 4. And we'll be here, and our lesson is going to be, if you recall... Every fifth Wednesday of the month, which isn't every Wednesday, not every month has a, f a fifth Wednesday, but every fifth Wednesday of the month, we get into some deep doctrine. And this is some out there stuff, and some people, you might, you might have never heard of this kind of stuff, but this Bible that we have, the pure word of God, you can get as deep as you want in that book, and you'll never find the end. That's how pure this word is. That's how you know it's from God. And we're going to be discussing something that's very controversial to some Christians, but if you take, it, if you take, uh, if you take the word of God for what it says, we're going to be discussing the Genesis Gap. The Genesis Gap, and uh, you're not going to want to miss this one. This is one of the most interesting deep doctrine lessons you can ever have on the Bible. So we're going to be doing that this Wednesday, the 29th, and the big news is Saturday, July 2nd, we'll be having a special service uh, on 13th Street by the Bike Village where Pastor Randy Gorski of AV, King James Bible Baptist Church in Antelope Valley, he's coming down to preach a special message for our church, and he'll be joined with his wonderful wife, with, by his wonderful wife, Mary Chris, and his awesome son, Josiah. Okay. Uh, before that, though, 11:30, we'll always be doing street preaching. Street preaching on Ninth and Palm. We had street preaching yesterday, and it was a very successful time. We had a. I had. You know when you're doing it right when people don't like what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was street preaching, and uh, yeah, I was sitting there. I was standing there in the corner of Ninth and Palm, and one one young teenage girl. She starts walking up. I can see on the look on her face. She's not happy with me. And I'm, I'm just street preaching, repent, repent, all that stuff. Mm. And she just yells at the top of her lungs, shut up! Yeah. And I just go, repent! <laughs> and, uh, oh, man, it, I'll, I'll tell you what, when you, get in the, when you get in the spirit and you start preaching God's word, uh, you get boldness. 
you get boldness that's not that doesn't come from you that comes from God and man oh man I, uh, you got to come out and, and join us and and that that's that's a trip man if you go out and street preach you're gonna see some stuff uh, and I warn you I warn you don't 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 try it by yourself you want to have someone with you because anything can happen okay anything can happen when you're out there on the street preaching the Word of God uh, there is a lot of stories of people that that have gotten violent with preachers because they don't people are predisposed to hating God's word so uh, if you're gonna go out there make sure you're in doctrine together and make sure that you uh, you understand how things work okay uh, the preacher the pastor whoever's in charge he, you got to take point from him you can't just go out there and be a, 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 a renegade you can't be a maverick you have to know who to put yourself under and that's the topic of the less of the preaching today know your place know your place uh, so that Saturday will be followed with uh, baptisms at the beach. Sister Joy and Sister Thalia have taken the decision that they are ready to be scripturally baptized, and they know that it's not from it's not for salvation; it's for obedience. And they're going to be baptized in the ocean. Okay. After that will be a barbecue. So it's going to be an all-day event. Uh, feel free to invite anyone you like, um, and and hopefully we'll have enough food for everyone. Go ahead. So besides that, Sam Gip. Brother Sam Gipp, he's one of the foremost authorities on the King James Bible, it, on the King James Bible. He's going to be preaching for four days starting tonight at the El Cajon Bible Believers Baptist Church, by, pastored by Josh Stevenson. And he's going to be guest preaching for four days. Uh, I want to make it at least one of those days. If you guys would like to carpool or something, let me know. Uh, I might be going tonight, depending how how tired I am from today, from preaching. But uh, if you've never heard Sam Gipp preach or teach before, man, that guy... That guy will teach you, teach circles around you in terms of the King James Bible and, and it, on the final authority. Listen, do you have a final authority? Is it? If you do, where is it? Either it's in the book or it's in it's in your imagination. Either you're your final authority or God is. Okay, you can't have it both ways. And if if you have a final authority, it has to be uh, it has to be scripturally based. You can't have your own opinion, your own your own beliefs be the final authority. It has to come from somewhere that's outside of you. And that's in this King James Bible. Here you go, brother. This is a King James Bible. That's for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too. Okay. So, we're also going to be having a ladies' fellowship for the ladies of the church. Um, obviously, there's men. it's just men here, so don't worry about that. But they're planning on a ladies' fellowship evening uh, where Sister Joy will be teaching a short lesson for the ladies of the church, Sister Thalia, Sister Eileen. Uh, and, who, and that's on them if they want to schedule that. And you know how hard it is to get women to come to one place at one time but be? you know what what's that when will the schedule happen for for what for the women for the women yeah. that's tentative we don't know yet it's depending on on how their schedules line up because okay. it's not i'm not i'm not going to be teaching that it's going to be a, would you just get the women. information so i can pass the information down? i'll get yeah i'll get you that don't worry brother as soon as i find out you'll be the first to know thank you now i also always make sure these bulletins have prayer requests and you'll probably be surprised to find that you're probably in there okay our church is praying for you guys, even if you don't, even when you don't show up, we're, you're right there, you know. So uh, please keep this with you. Keep this with you throughout the week and pray over this. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Now, finally, before we get to the announce, the offering, uh, praise reports. We have praise reports to give. First and foremost, uh, God has given Brother Lewis grace, and he's actually been able to pass his written driving test. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's a huge blessing for our church because uh, he. he he shows up every week. He shows up three times a day if he has to. But uh, if he didn't have it, man, that, that would be hard hard time for this church because, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a pillar of this church. And you have to realize that uh, not being able to drive, especially when you get older, it's, it's, it becomes really detrimental. It becomes hard on you. Yeah. So we want to thank the Lord for blessing Brother Lewis. Amen. Um, Brother Raymond, who you folks haven't met, um, he used to come to this church, and I've been keeping in contact and fellowship with him. Uh, he recently has, the Lord has enrolled him in an automotive, automotive job training program uh, that's going to help him to be financially uh, supportive, uh, be able to support himself, and we just want to thank the Lord for that. We want to thank the Lord for Sister Thalia as well. She was actually able to lead someone to Christ the other day uh, outside a coffee shop. Um, and you know what it's a blessing listen your ministry if you're a part of this church if you're if you're a member of this church I'm not saying if you come to this church if you're a member of this church part of this church your ministry uh, uh, we all see the blessings of it we all see the, the fruits of it listen your ministry is part of this church if you're if you're a member of this church and it's in our best interest to make sure your ministry is doing well listen do you have the tools you need are you getting fed properly are you getting fed spiritually uh, 
because we want to see you bear spiritual fruit. Your ministry should be thriving. It should be prospering. And if it's not, there's something wrong. And either I'm at fault or you got to get something right. Understand? Yes, so we want your ministries to be prospering. And if it's not, well, talk to me. Talk to me. We'll get that right. Um, Sister Joy's wrist pain has greatly reduced. Remember, we prayed for that. And the Lord answers prayers. He does. Not, all, not the way you're expecting usually, but he does. And she, her wrist had been bothering her. And then recently, I'll tell you what happened. She, Sister Joy got sick. That's why she's not here today. And it's unfortunate, and we missed her on Wednesday. And, and you know what? It's been trials for this church. This church has been going through a lot lately, and the devil has not wanted our church to prosper. The devil is trying to discourage us. But let me tell you what's happening. Uh, the Lord's using that for good. Uh, we prayed for Sister Joy that wrist pain would go away. Well, you know what? She's been sick for three days. She hasn't eaten. She got all that stuff out of her system. You know what it was? It's inflammation. When your body is inflamed, you'd be surprised what happens to it. You'd be surprised all the aches and pains that won't go away because, listen, uh, your body, what you're feeding it, uh, it's not what you're supposed to be feeding. We're not, we're, we're not supposed to be living off 60 grams of sugar and, and, and processed food every single day, every meal. Listen, uh, so what happens is when you, you, you fast, okay, your body actually cleanses itself of all those things. And her wrist pain went away. The inflammation caused from sugar, processed sugar, it, went, it caused her wrist pain to go away. Now, it wasn't pretty how it happened because she got really sick. But you know what? The Lord answered that prayer, and now she's she's saying, "Wow, I'm gonna try and stick with whatever diet that was, which is you know, nothing at all." But she's gonna be eating healthier now to keep that wrist pain from coming back. And That's good. you know what? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He answered that Amen. prayer. Now, finally, the Lord has been working mightily in our street on our street preaching ministry, and many many people have gotten to hear the true gospel in Imperial Beach as a result. Okay, you you guys underestimate street preaching. You have any idea? I'll tell you this right now. You know the number one fear among most people? The number one fear is public speaking. That's the scariest thing in the world to, to, to the majority of people for some reason. I don't know why. They are deathly terrified of, of going out there and making a fool of themselves. Uh, and you can't. You have to be bold if you want to be a man of God. You have to be bold. And you have to be willing to stand up against sin. And that's what we do at the street on uh, street preaching. And if you want to take, partake, uh, you know, feel free. We can have signs. You, you guys hold up signs. Okay, everyone can partake in this ministry. It's not just for the pastor. It's not just for the elders. It's for all of you. But you have to understand. Know your place. Understand? That's the, that's the topic of the sermon today. Now, we're going to go and open up your wallets for, I mean, your Bible. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to do an offering. If you guys are willing to give, that's fine. As the Lord guides you, okay? How you doing, sir? Hey. You can feel free to join us if you'd like. Oh, yeah. Amen. What's that? I already did. Amen. Well, then hopefully we'll see you some more. Uh, let's bow our heads. Father God, Lord, we thank you so much for the offering, Lord, and for giving us a chance to, to, to lay up rewards in heaven, Lord. And we know that we, we're not rich. We don't have money. But, Lord, we give as, we, as we've been able to, Lord. And we just ask that you can bless the offering. And please bless the givers, Lord. Uh, uh, we're just a small church, Lord. And we're asking that this money can be put to good use for the betterment of, of your kingdom, Lord, for establishing something down here for you, Father. And, Lord, we realize that we can't we, – we're not – kingdom builders we're only here to uh preach the word and, and and to preach against sin lord and we're just asking you father to, to bless this offering in jesus's precious name lord amen amen here you go yeah. now we're gonna do one more hymn and we're gonna get to the lesson or the teaching the preaching sorry thank you, thank you brother uh, okay. Where was it again? Battle Hymn of the Republic, 530. 530. Mm. I picked this one because I think the men like this more than the women. Mm. Please stand if you can. If you can, please stand. 530 in your red hymnals. 530 in your red hymnals. And I'll give you a second, brother, if you're... Thank you, thank you. This is Brother Noel, by the way. Brother Noel and Brother Noel. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Joe. Well, yes. Well, that's what the song says. No, no. Yeah. 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 Okay, I hear that a lot. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you guys how we met after. Yeah. It's an interesting story, believe it or not. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, five thirty. Five thirty. If you wanna, if you wanna, so you can see it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You want? Thank well, you. Actually, no, yeah, yeah. Just do that. Yeah, yeah, just hold the baby. Okay. 
Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. He builded him an altar in the evening dews and dance. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Amen. Amen. And they all be seated. Amen, brother. Thank you. Okay. You guys get are you guys ready to get mad at me? No. Oh man, I came to the wrong I can't place. Get mad at you <laughs> Amen. Well these guys are gonna get mad at me. They don't they're not gonna like this sermon. The oh, world doesn't real. like this preaching. So you know what? Let's let's preach loud. Amen. So, as you all remember. I've been doing a series on Pride Month. Pride Month. Now, uh, City Hall likes to hold, you know, wave that flag, that rainbow flag, and they they want to take the symbol of God's covenant with Noah, okay, that He would never flood the earth again, and they want to take that and take it for their own. It's funny how the devil likes to take the things of God and misappropriate it and use it for his own wicked purpose. Now, concluding our politically correct all-inclusive, totally tolerant series on Pride Month. Today I want to focus on man and women. On man and woman. Now, that's all there is, by the way. There's no in-between. There's no, uh, I feel like a girl today. I feel like a boy. No, it's you're either a man or you're a woman. Okay, that's how God made it. It's not a spectrum. It's not one of the, it's one or the other. Our world, however, is all sorts of messed up, you must know. Now imagine... Just imagine this, if you will, travel back in time a hundred years and you get to tell someone, anyone, uh, what the future is like. Okay, you get to tell them, yeah, so in the future, uh, uh, we don't know what a woman is in the future. We don't know, we can't, you know, I can't judge, I'm not a biologist in the future, so I can't tell you if you're a boy or a girl, see? Imagine, so, imagine telling that someone in the past, a hundred years, and they think, that's a, are you serious? Mm -hmm. You don't know what a, a man or a woman is? And you know what? To that person, you tell that, that's a nightmare. But to us, that's reality. Mm. See? And listen, how did things get like this? Why are we, why is our world so backwards? Who's to blame? Well, listen, let me tell you what. You might not like the answer. You might not like the answer. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, you'll get the answer. And you might not like it. You might not like who's to blame. Now, I want everyone to open up to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2. And that's in your New Testament. It's before Hebrews, before uh, Titus, before Philemon, before 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 8 to 15. Give an amen when everyone's there. Amen. First, chapter? 
1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. Amen. Amen? Yes. All right. The Bible says in verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the, women, let, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first form, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Now, as I said, the topic of this sermon is know your place. Know your place. And that Bible just told us what our place is, men and women. Let's bow our heads. Father God, Lord, I pray that you can bless this preaching in the name of God, Lord, uh, that it would be edifying to the listeners both here and online. Lord, that you would get this preacher out of the flesh, that you would get him out of the way. Lord, have your way with this preaching, Lord. Touch the hearts and ears of everyone in attendance, Lord, that it might be uh, used for the edification of the saints, Lord, that they might take some sort of spiritual reward, and spiritual gift, and spiritual learning from this teaching and preaching, Father. And Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, in this passage, we see the order between man and woman. The order between man and woman. Now, a lot of people, they take this, con this passage out of context and, and they think this applies to the church. This, no, this is applying between a man and a woman, the relationship between man and woman. Okay? And I'm going to get over some things that have been misconceptions in this verse as they come along. So, Listen, you might not like it, but the man's role, as it shows us in verse uh, 8, the man's role is the spiritual leader of the household. Yes. He's supposed to be the spiritual leader, not the woman. That's how, listen, man is not the weaker vessel. Woman is. Woman, yes. Man has to be the spiritual leader. He has to lead. Uh, that's how God designed this whole show to run. Things don't run like that. Uh, stuff starts to happen. There starts to be some hiccups in the engine. When you mess up that order between men and women, let me show you something. You mess up everything. Uh, don't turn with me there, but Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12 says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Okay? Uh, the Bible says that, O oh, my people, they're, they're, women and children rule over you men. You ever watch TV and it's, the, it's always the man that's the bubbling buffoon in the sitcoms? He doesn't know how to change a baby's diaper. He doesn't know how to lead the household. It's always the woman that's in the it has the pants on. Uh, it's almost like the devil wants that that picture to show up and be in commonplace to you guys. That's not how things should be running. The man should be competent. The man should be the leader. The man should be spiritual. So, verse 8, let's, let's analyze this passage. Let's get into the nitty-gritty. The Bible says, verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Where do you pray, men? Do you only pray at your, at, by your bedside? Do you only pray when things are going wrong? Do you only pray when, when you feel like you got no hope left? The Bible says to pray everywhere. Where are you praying? Are you, and it tells you, the Bible says, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Uh, I'm going I'm to tell you something about men. In case you didn't know, Men, listen, today's modern Christian man, are they men of prayer? No. No. The modern man is not a man of prayer. And I'm sorry to say uh, he, he, that he's really not. In, in most cases, it's the woman who is, uh, is more naturally the prayer warrior of the household. And listen, yes, women are spiritual. They, are, they have some sort of thing about prayer. They're natural spiritual prayer warriors. But men, that is no excuse for you to be spiritually lacking. Okay. The problem isn't women's abundance of prayer, it's man's lack of prayer. Doesn't the Bible tell, tell us to pray without ceasing? Well, what business does the Christian man having, have being weak in prayer? Let me tell you something about men. We're naturally inclined to want to see the results. Okay, We're naturally inclined to want to see the evidence of, of, of our labor. So when we pray, uh, naturally to us, it doesn't make sense. Why? Because we need faith. And men, listen, we, we see a problem, we want to go fix it. Isn't that true? Yeah. When a woman's saying, I just, I just wish you'd listen, I want to fix the problem so you'd stop complaining to me. That's not, men and women are different.
okay? And you have to realize that uh, as men, we're naturally inclined to want to see the results when sometimes we should just have faith. We should be willing to pray to God, okay? You see a nail that's jutting out of the wall, you, and the first thing you want to do is get a hammer and whack it. But there's some times where you have to pray to God to, do, to whack that nail, and you have to have it on faith that he's going to do it instead of you trying to do it yourself and, and ruining everything, okay? Knowing you, you're probably just going to whack that, whack that hammer straight into the wall and just... Now you got to fix the drywall while you're at it too, okay? You got to you got to learn your place, know your place. And by the way, what happens when you can't fix something that you really want to fix? We get angry, we get angry, we get doubtful. Apostle Paul tells us to lift up our hands uh, without wrath or doubt. Okay, when you're praying, don't be don't be mad at God. Why don't you answer my prayers, God? Don't be mad at Him. And don't be doubtful either. You think God won't answer it if it's in his will? Listen, I, I got to tell you something, men. Yeah, we're men like tools. Men like tools. Let me tell you something. There is no tool on this earth more powerful than prayer. I don't care what it is, okay? I don't care what it is. Your, 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 your strength is not that powerful. Your mind isn't that as powerful as prayer. Your finances isn't as powerful as prayer. It isn't as powerful of a tool. Your church isn't as good of a tool. Even your Bible isn't as good of a tool as your prayer life, okay? Because it's your prayer life that'll get that Bible in your hand. If you could get, uh, if you could be on a deserted island with one thing and one thing alone before my Bible, I'd even I'd pick prayer. Prayer, believe it or not. Okay, remember Daniel. For three weeks, the devil tried to stop his prayer from getting answered. The devil, he, he didn't care if he had the word of God in Daniel's hand. He cared if his prayers were getting answered. What about your prayers? Are you praying like Daniel? Do you take your prayer life seriously? If you don't, there's a problem. Men are supposed to lead by example. Men are supposed to know their place. Not just sitting idly by and letting their women handle it. It's pathetic. Okay? Now... Now we get to do the every man's favorite part. We're going to pick on the women. Verse 9 to 12. Amen? Amen. Uh, verse 9, let's go back to it. I will therefore, uh, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness, sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Okay? So a lot of people will misconstrue that verse and say, well, women aren't allowed to wear gold. Women aren't allowed to look nice. No. What it's saying is women aren't shouldn't be... Uh, dressing to draw someone's attention at the church or dressing to draw your attention. They're supposed to be modest, okay? Modest. Why is it that at churches nowadays, women treat it like it's a, a club? Like they got to they gotta dress to impress. They got to put on that dress that's revealing. They got to be immodest, okay? Why is it? Apostle Paul warned of it. Verse 10, but which becometh women professing godliness with good work. I don't care how good she looks. What are her works? What are her works? Yeah, she could, she can be a uh, she can be a blonde supermodel, but whatever works, okay. Well, how's the inside look? And I look, before, before there's no women here right now, but before they, they even start, I'm not saying a woman isn't allowed to look nice. I'm not saying that a woman isn't allowed to wear you know uh, uh, makeup, but, but is it in the spirit of modesty? Is it in the spirit of modesty? There's something about women that they always have to, they always make it a competition between them and other women. Have you noticed that? And if, if, if I ask the women of the church right now, uh, do all women get along? Every single woman on, on planet Earth would say no. Mm. Women bicker. Women, they're catty. Men, we're not like that, okay? You know, we can punch each other. We can get in a fight one moment, and the next day we're fine. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. That's how God made us. And. Let me find my place one more time. Listen, women naturally, they want to say, D -d did you see what Becky wore to church that uh, last Sunday? Who's she trying to impress? I bet she's trying to, she's trying to shack up with the pastor. Women gossip. It's natural to them. Their mouth gets them in trouble. Okay? The, let me tell you the problem with women. Uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We have the same problem. But listen, who was, the, who was tempted in the Garden of Eden? It was Eve. Okay? In verse 9, Apostle Paul tells them to, to be modest. Now, verse 11, let the woman le learn in silence with all subjection. Okay, That's not saying that a woman isn't allowed to talk, talk at the church. Okay, It has to do with men and women. And to learn in silence. Women's problem is their mouths. Yep. Women's mouths 
get them into big trouble. Who are they talking to? What did they say? Okay, who, who, why are they gossiping? And, it's, and not only that, to learn with, in subjection. Women naturally today, they don't want to be put under a man. That's just, that's just how, that's how our society has evolved. Men think it's, uh, women think it's, it's degrading to be put under a man. No, it's, how, it's what you were made to do. Listen, just because they're weaker vessels doesn't mean they're lesser vessels. You understand that? Uh, there's a lot of people that think Christians, oh, they're misogynists. They're, I, I, I've seen Christians treat w women much better than the world does. Okay? Uh, when was the last time you saw a, a man pull a seat, pull, a, pull over, over a seat for a lady so she can sit down? Okay? You don't see that in the world. How, how often do you see a man open a, a door for a lady? Now they'll just, you know, open it yourself. Okay? That's what the world does. We, men, Christian men are supposed to hold themselves to a higher standard. Okay? They're weaker vessels, not lesser. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you can start having a successful re uh, uh, relationship with your woman, if you're married. Or just treating women better in general. And, but first you have to know your place, men and women. A woman is supposed to be in silence, learning, okay? In silence. Uh, do you realize, women, if, if they were here, I would ask them, do you realize that uh, how many of your problems could be avoided if you just zipped up? If you just stopped talking? If you just cut things short right then and there with that conversation that you're not even supposed to be having? How many problems would have been cut short if Eve had just shut her yap? If she had just told Satan, you know what, talk to my husband. How many problems would we have not had to go through if Eve, had, if Eve had just had control over that thing? You have to be very careful what you say and who you say it to. Because that mouth will get you into trouble. James chapter 2. Turn with me to James chapter 2. Keep your hand on, on 1 Timothy, but go to James chapter 2. And uh, verse... Or James chapter 3, I'm sorry. James 3. That's after Hebrews. James 3, chapter uh, 3, verse 2 to 8. Okay, so the Bible says, and you take time turning there, I'll just start reading. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Verse 3, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Okay, let's pause right there. The ship is turned by just a small wheel. James 3. James 3. The ship is turned by a small wheel. The horse, it's just one bridle in its mouth. It steers that, you know, two ton, uh, one ton pound horse. It's a small thing that can control such a large being. Verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Your tongue is a poison. Your tongue is a fire. Okay? Not just women but men too. Okay, first you have to understand, you realize that one, one woman's mouth can sentence a man to life in prison for something he didn't commit? You understand how dangerous the mouth is now? Uh, and listen, men, that applies to you too. Proverbs 17, verse 27 to 28, it says, He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You want to sound smart? Shut up. You want to sound wise in front of someone? Stop talking. You'd be surprised what it can do for your image. Not that it matters. But listen, uh, your mouth, it, it says a lot about you more than you think it does. Your mouth. Now, listen. If you don't see, if you don't listen at least... You, God gave you two ears and a mouth. You've heard that before. And if you don't listen at least twice as much as you speak, uh, you got a problem. How, how much do you listen to com compared to how much you speak? We, we, people that speak a lot, they, they, they want to fill the air. Okay, but listen, you can learn a lot from just listening. 
You can learn a lot about people when you have that uncomfortable silence. What happens when someone's uncomfortable in silence? They want to talk, okay? They want to make a fool of themselves. Let, let, see, what, see what happens when it's silent. And see what you do when it's silent. Uh, you have to control that mouth of yours, men and women. That mouth, listen, if I had just shut up sometimes, oh man, uh, Im imagine where we'd be. <laughs> imagine the problems we could have avoided if we just zipped up, if we just stopped talking, if we just let someone else uh, make a fool of themselves instead of ourselves. If we just knew our place. Listen, it's not my place to say that. I'll let someone else deal with it. Do you know your place, men? Do you? God made you to re uh, God made women to rely on you. God made women to rely on you, not the other way around. You're not supposed to rely on the woman. Oh, I just, I just wish that my woman was more, you know, that she would provide for me. No, God had made you the stronger vessel, not the woman. And I'm not saying that a woman shouldn't be allowed to work or if there's finances are tough that she shouldn't uh, work. I'm saying that, that there's a picture that you're supposed to be following. Okay, and that picture is, is, is the picture of Jesus Christ in the church. Okay, God made man the head of the household. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Okay, you come to him. You don't, he doesn't come to you. Is that picture being messed with? If it is, you got problems and you got to come to church and you, you got to get right with God and you got to fix it. Okay, listen, uh, God made woman the help meet, not man. God made woman out of, out of Adam's rib. Okay. Adam was made first, not Eve. Do you understand that all these problems started to occur when that picture was messed up? When, when, when Adam was, was shirking his responsibility? When Eve was running her mouth and talking to someone she shouldn't be around? When her man was gone? Listen, yeah, Eve was the weaker vessel. She was deceived. Uh, let's go back to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Chapter uh, 2. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Listen, Eve was the one that got tricked. Eve was the one that messed up. But Adam, you know what? Even after that, he said he, he decided to take that fruit too. Okay? Now you can say that, yeah, he loved Eve so much he wanted to die with her. Uh, but listen, Eve was the one that was deceived. And because of that, well, then Eve is the one that has to suffer in childbearing. And you go to verse, uh, first let's go to... Uh, let's go to 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and with sobriety. Uh, there's something about women that they want to, nowadays, they want to they wanna just uh, brag about how hard it is to be a woman. They do. Uh, oh, you, you know, if, if the world was ruled by women, we wouldn't have war. You believe that? That's what they say. <laughs> Listen. Women have their own hardships to deal with, and men too, do too. But men, when we start complaining about how hard our lives is and how hard it is being a man and working and providing, no one, no one cares, okay? And women, listen, women shouldn't be complaining about what they have to deal with either. We got no right to complain, neither of us. And yeah, it's equal lumps for every one of us. Listen, we all get to take our lumps. And remember, men that you are the stronger vessel. So there's going to be some stuff that you have to put up with that women will have no idea. Women have no idea what it's like. You know, women, uh, men naturally, they deal with loneliness more than women. It's true. And, but the Bible tells us to endure hardships as good soldiers in Christ. Are you enduring hard, hardness? Are you, do, are you a soldier right now? Are you fighting? Are you waging war? Or are you letting your women do it for you? Do you know your place, men? If you think I'm being harsh, let's stop real quick. Let's stop real quick and see the results of men acting like women and women acting like men. Okay? You want to know how wicked this stuff is? Let's look at the fruit. The Bible says, wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. What are the fruits of this picture being skewed? What are the fruits of this gender role reversal that they want to say is natural, that is right, that is equality? Uh, let's see. Okay, 150 years ago, you know what the divorce rate between men and women was in America? 150 years ago, it was less than 1%. 0.3%. What is it now? Like 50? 50. You realize how crazy that is that in 150 years we've fallen that far? That's what happens when men and women swap their roles. That's what happens when women lead. Okay? Uh, here's one that'll get you. You're not going to like this one. Because of man refusing because of men refusing to be men, American city citizens who identi identify as sodomites have gone from 3.5% of the population in the last 10 years to 7.1% in the last 10 years. They've, they've doubled. 
Because men don't want to be men. Because the, we gotta be inclusive. We gotta be tolerant. We gotta be. Uh, we gotta tolerate each other's differences. No, you gotta preach against sin. You gotta get right. You gotta be a man. Okay. And uh, don't worry, it gets worse. It gets worse. Trust me. Uh, statistics show that 9.54 percent of the youth today identify as LGBT. The children are confused. Mommy and daddy aren't giving them good examples to lead by. God is not the author of confusion, you must understand. Where is this coming from then? The devil. The devil. This is his this is his doing. But you know what? You know whose fault it is? It's your guys' fault. Yeah. It's your guys' fault. Men, you go back to Adam, what was his sin? He shirked his responsibility. He wasn't with the woman like he was supposed to be. What about you, men? What are you shirking? What responsibilities do you have that you're not living up to? God has appointed man as the household head of the household. Whatever happens because of, him, him, of, of you choosing not to man up, whatever happens is on you. Listen, it's easy to blame others. It's easy to blame the devil. It's easy to blame the world. But it's all happening because of our failure as Christian men, as people that have the word of God, that have the truth, that know the truth, that are supposed to walk in the spirit in righteousness. What are we doing with it? It's our fault. We had the pure word of God. We had a King James Bible-believing Baptist church. And where are you guys on Saturdays? Where are you guys on Wednesdays? Where are you guys uh, uh, preaching against sin, preaching the true gospel? What are you doing? What is your responsibility? What is your place? Okay? What did you do with the knowledge that God gave you? Okay, the last thing I want for this church is for Jesus to ask us, what did you do with all that I gave you? Did you preach against sin? Did you did you share, spread my gospel? And all that you guys can say is, uh, that's the last thing I want for this church. Time is short, brethren. Time is short. We're on a sinking ship. And listen, we're not going to change the world. Okay, this is a sinking ship on its way to hell. You're not going to change the world, but you can still obey God. Man, I urge you now to take a stand for God. Follow the word. And women, be helpmates to man. Be a helpmate. You have any idea how hard it is being a spiritual man of God in this wicked day and age? We need all the help we can get. And, and, and if you're a woman of God and you have a man that is trying to do right by God, you got to stand by that man. you got to support him. you got to know your place. This is not the time to be living in confusion. This is not the time to be letting the world go idly by on your way to hell. You, you can do what Jeremiah did and preach in the streets. You can make a fool of yourself. You know preaching is foolishness to man? The wisdom of God is foolishness to man. Man doesn't want to believe that God would judge their sins with a burning hell. But you know what? I know that it's true. You know that it's true. But what are you doing about it? What are you t who are you telling? Do you care that the, your, your loved ones are going to hell? Do you realize every single person in this room probably has at least one person that they love for that's burning in hell right now? And you know what? They're in hell right now. They're going to be in hell tomorrow. They're going to be in hell for the day, the day you die. And they're going to be in hell for eternity after. And do you want the next person you care for to go there? So then what are you doing? Where is your place, men? Are you, are, you, are you sitting idly by and letting your women do the spiritual warfare for you? You realize that women, they're going to anything that's spiritual because they, they can't get it from you. They, they're looking for somewhere to have spirituality in their lives. And they'll go to yoga. They'll go to all those other stupid things, the, the, the healing hands, all that other junk. They'll go to Pentecostals. They'll go to anything that sounds spiritual because they're not getting it from you men. Man up. Man up, man. And listen, uh, I'm sorry to break it to you. It's Pride Month. Uh, what do you have to be proud about? You realize how pathetic it is that we have City Hall waving that flag overhead while there's a Bible-believing Baptist church over here? Listen, uh, why is it that we can only get three men, four men to show up on any given day? Where are you? How are you? Are you guys inviting other people to come with you? Do you guys care that you 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 have the true word of God? You have pure preaching that's that's on doctrine, and you're not telling other people about it? Know your place, man. Let's bow our heads. Okay. Father God, Lord, uh, we, I ask that you can bless uh, the listeners today, Lord, that they got something from this, Father. And Lord, we want to know our place, Lord. We want to know where it is that you would have us to be, Lord. Help us to grow into men of God that you would reveal your plan to, Lord, that we would know where our calling is from you, Father. And Lord, that you could help us with our, with our helpmates, Lord, that we could have uh, people that 
want to hear the truth, Lord, that we can spread the gospel to all the all the world. And Lord, we realize that there is no uh, hope for this world without you, Lord. We realize that, but Father, we have a, we have to obey you, Father. And Lord, uh, we just pray that whoever wants to hear the truth, that they can come to this church, Lord. There, we there's not any, many churches out there that are scriptural anymore, Lord. We need we need people to come and hear the word, Father. So to that end, Lord, we ask that you can bless our ministry, bless our street preaching, bless our evangelism, and Lord, bless our men that they would know their place, and Lord, that they would come back here, Lord. And, and serve you spiritually, Lord. Be good soldiers in Christ. And Lord, uh, and a we ask that you can bless our women to be good helpmeets, Lord, that they could support the man, Father, that Lord, uh, that they could be good examples of women uh, who are serving you, Lord. And that, Father, we, could, we can turn from sin and turn to Jesus. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to stop the stream. And after that, we're going to have a quick intermission. And we're going to have a short lesson on the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. If you guys want to stick around after we talk, have fellowship, maybe get some food, it's on you guys. This church is, if how, how this church grows, it's not just the pastor. It's 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 the church. Amen. So, and you, it's all, it's, your ministry is part of this church. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be part of this church, you have, to, you have to do your best to make it thrive. The church is a living organism, okay? If you don't feed a living organism, what's going to happen? It dies. You want this church to die? No, well then man up. All right.